In this video, I'm going to show you how the Waypoint 2.0 is working. I think you will find this is quite a significant upgrade from the original Waypoint missions that you could do with your DJI product. But before we get to that, let's roll that intro. With the original Mavic Pro series, DJI introduced waypoints. The approach they chose was not really optimal because you had to be on site and fly the actual mission and then use the function buttons on the back of the remote to record the positions where you wanted the drone to go. In this way, you couldn't plan the mission prior to going out. And that was a big downside to that approach. To solve that, many used third-party apps like Litchi to be able to map waypoints on a map before you went out flying the action. But with the 2.0 upgrade of waypoints, it's actually possible to do everything now inside the DJI Go 4 app. Let me show you how. You start by going into your intelligent flight modes and in here you will find a spot that's called waypoints. If you tap that, you will get a map. And it will actually show your current position. And uh, this is where we're gonna plan a very, very simple uh, mission. And you start by pressing a C1 to set the first waypoint. And that will put that directly where we are setting uh, the takeoff point. It's optional and up to you. The next thing that you do is you go out here and you position another waypoint by tapping the screen. And we want one more and we want a final one out here in the middle of the lake. So now I put in four waypoints. Because I don't have any control of the camera, I need to make sure that I know where the camera is pointing so I can control the outcome of this recording. So the next step that I wanna do I want to put in a point of interest. So I do that by pressing the star. And once I press the star, I can put in a point of interest out here in the middle of the leg. And then I will basically move the map and then I'll put one here close to where I'm sitting. So now I have two point of interest that I can use to uh, control the, the direction of the camera. And I put in a third one by accident. And uh, one little nice trick is that you can press the C2 button and then it will remove the last action. The options that I have now is pretty simple. I will just tap one of the waypoints and then you will see the options uh, that you can use to modify them. What we know now is that waypoint 2 is located uh, 50 meter high. If I want to change that uh, position, I can just swipe up and down the screen and that will allow me to change it. So I just do that like that. So let's put that to, let's say 70 meters. And then I can uh, ask the camera to point in the direction that I want it to look by selecting point of interest down here in the bottom menu. And in my case, I want the camera in position two, waypoint two, to look at point of interest two. So you can see the, the white arrow points towards uh, the point of uh, interest. And this will be the position that the camera will point. While we're down here at the bottom menu, that will allow me to change certain things. Uh, I can uh, change the altitude as you saw before. I can change the cruising speed. That is set to a default speed. So if you want uh, to cruise or want to travel between uh, two uh, waypoints in a, in a different speed than the default speed, then you can change it uh, directly here in the interface. Otherwise, it will choose the cruising speed. If I've chosen a point of interest, I can't really change uh, the direction of uh, the camera. That, uh, that makes perfectly sense. One thing that I want to show you, you can very easily go back and forward through the waypoints through these arrows that you have up here. This one we haven't touched yet, so I can show you. Here you can select either custom direction, which means that you can put the camera in a certain direction, but you can also do that by changing the gimbal pitch. So you have um, some tools that will allow you to fix the camera into certain positions. But most of the time using point of interest would uh, produce uh, the best result. And uh, in this case, we just want the camera to select the route. Unless we ask it to do something else, it will just follow the route that the drone is flying. We can just finalize this by just adding the point of interest two here. So now both waypoint two and waypoint three will point towards uh, the point of interest two. When you reach a certain waypoint, you also have the option to set the drone to do certain actions. So let's say that we in waypoint number two, we want to start a recording. So I just press waypoint two, and then I go down here to the menu, and I will get some additional options here. And here I can do the start recording. So now it will start recording when it gets to uh, waypoint number two. If I just skip on to waypoint number three, I can ask the camera to stop recording. So that is very, very simple and you can see it on the map. So it's very easy to understand what's going on. Let's say in uh, waypoint number four, I want the camera to look towards the point of interest one. Just do that. 
So now the white arrow on the waypoint four is pointing towards point of interest number one. And in this position, I want the drone to take a picture. So now I've just set up my mission. One thing that you want to do before you do anything else here is actually to save it. So just press the disk icon here. So that means that the task is saved successfully. If you don't do that, you will actually lose it, which I did just before <laughs> with the first part of the video that I recorded. So remember to save it before you take off. So let's just go through the mission. So if we go up here, waypoint number one, it will start flying towards waypoint number two and the camera will not point anywhere right now. It will just follow the route that it's uh, flying. Once it reaches uh, waypoint number two, it will turn around and it will face the position where I'm sitting here on the show. And it will start recording and it will increase the altitude to 70 meters. Then it will move on to uh, waypoint number three and it will decline to 50 meters and it will stop recording. After that, it will, uh, and it will still look towards uh, where I'm sitting, which was the point of interest number two. Then it will head on to waypoint number four, where the camera will turn towards uh, point of interest number one, and then it will snap a photo, and then the mission is basically completed. Let's try that out and see how that works. The way that you launch the mission is uh, you basically press go on uh, the screen. And here you will get a summary of your mission which is pretty nice, so you know that everything is uh, like it's supposed to be. The total uh, distance you we need to travel for this uh, demonstration is 250 meters approximately. It will take around a minute with the cruising speed that we have chosen. We have 79% of battery, which is uh, plenty to complete that. We have made a custom route. Even more important, when we reach waypoint number four, we need to return to home uh, as the final act uh, of the mission. And the same goes with uh, what happens if we lose the RC signal on the way, which uh, is not very likely to happen, but it can happen. But if that does, I just want it to continue the mission. And then when it reaches waypoint four, then it will return to home. The return to home altitude is uh, 30 meters. And in most cases, this is good. If you want to make sure that it doesn't collide with anything, you should put it higher. Where we are right now, it, sh it should be plenty high with 30 meters. Finally, you have to decide if uh, how it should travel. Should it travel as a polyline or as an arc? But you need to know if you select arc, there would be uh, no possibility to do camera actions in uh, the certain waypoints. If you want that, then you need to start uh, the recording manually if you need to fly arc. So for this demonstration, we will just do uh, the polyline. The cruising speed that I mentioned earlier, that is set to 14.4 kilometers an hour, and you can increase and decrease that depending on how fast you want your mission executed. Finally, you can decide which uh, waypoint should be your starting point. And in my case, it's just above me. So I will select waypoint number one. And basically there is few uh, trees here. So I don't know if that's even possible. Let's uh, check that out and see if uh, it works. Otherwise we have to abort the mission and readjust point one. All right, so that was uh, not a big success. Let's uh, just try it one more time. I think it's because the waypoint one is positioned uh, behind me. So let's uh, just try and alter this waypoint and see if we can make uh, the mission succeed. So uh, let's go in here again, select waypoints. Then I can go under these three dots and then I can see my task library and I can load the mission that we just had. And uh, now I wanna basically take away this waypoint. So what I will do, I will press delete. So now this is my waypoint one. And what I can do now is I can add another waypoint. Just do like that. So now I will get a new waypoint one. And I can move the waypoint to the position where I want. Now we put in a new waypoint one. It's basically identical to the other one. It's just positioned further away and away from all the, the background here. So let's try and execute the mission again and see if we can fly it. So what I had to do now, because it was impossible to launch from this uh, pad because of all the obstacle avoidance, you can uh, basically start a mission. Uh, you don't need to take off from the ground to be able to start the mission. You can just take off. And then you, we go in here and uh, you load the task like that. And then we can try and execute it and see what happens. So everything is like it's supposed to be. And uh, we upload it. And now the mission is uh, being executed. Let's just zoom in on the map here so we can see what it's doing. So now it's moving towards waypoint number one. And uh, it turns. 
and it looks towards point of interest number two. And when we get to waypoint number two, it will start recording. And you will see the altitude is 70 meters, like we put in, and you heard the beep, which indicates that it starts recording. And I can see we messed up all the point of uh, interest uh, on the missions because we had these starting problems, but now it will just face point of interest number one, and it will stop the recording. It will back off towards waypoint number four, which is basically looking at waypoint number one, and it will take a picture. Go home. And once it has reached waypoint four, it will return to home. Finally completed the mission and uh, just to summarize the problems that I ran into and that has nothing to do with the waypoint 2.0 was that I was trying to take off from this path um, where there's a lot of obstacles around it and that prevented me from doing the missions and uh, the way around that was uh, that uh, I launched the drone and positioned it somewhere in free space and uh, while it was airborne I could start the mission and then it will uh, complete it and execute it like, like we planned here. All that has nothing to do with the Waypoint 2.0. And as you saw, this is a pretty nifty tool that will allow you to do fully autonomous missions, just planning from the DJI Go 4 app. So right now, you should have enough information to get you started with the Waypoint 2.0. There's a few more details that they, I could cover in a later video, but this is at least enough information to get you started right now. Hey, if you're new around here, I'm Henrik Olsen, and if you want to improve your drone skills, learn about e wheels, then consider subscribing to my weekly tips, tests, and tutorials. So, I hope you liked this video. If you did, then uh, press the like button below. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching, and see you on the next one. Some. Hmm. Det er sådan, de bliver til.